June is the month for hearing this angelic tune. One of the most common songbirds living in a wide range of habitats, such as the boreal forests, deciduous woods, and mountain forests across southern and central Canada, the United States, and northern Mexico, many people know the song of the hermit thrush. As the name hermit suggests, these birds are not one to be out in the limelight. They prefer to be hidden deep within the forest, and thanks to its not-so-striking coloration, this little thrush can easily blend into its surroundings making it difficult to locate the culprit with the ethereal voice. Without their ear-catching mystical song, it's easy to not be aware of their presence. How sweet the honor it is to spot one in a tree singing. These conspicuous flute-like notes that they produce start with a long whistle that then changes into a series of musical phrases of different pitches, always ending off with softer echo-like tones. It is described as sounding like, oh, holy, holy, ah, purity, purity, a, sweetly, sweetly. Between each phrase is a pause. In their songs is harmony, which isn't typically seen in birds. In the third phrase, it sounds as if it is singing two notes at once harmonically, those echo-like sounds I mentioned. An ability that vocalists around the world would listen to enviously. This skill is thanks to the paired valve syrinx in the bird's throat. Each side is independently controlled, allowing for two different notes, one from each half of its syrinx, to be produced at once. They can make rising and falling notes simultaneously giving that lovely, unbelievable song many people love to hear each spring. This talent of creating such incredible sounds is something that is common with other thrushes. Think of the familiar and sweet-sounding American robin, which the hermit thrush behaves and looks similar, only smaller. However sweet the robin's voice is, it doesn't hold a candle to the hermit thrush. The other brown thrushes, however, are another story. Many people find the very quite captivating. And Swainson's thrush is very much favored too. These are tough contenders for the hermit thrush, but they do not produce that spiritual quality of tone like this renowned songster. Every spring when hermit thrushes arrive, they seem to transform the feeling of these forests into one that has this supernatural atmosphere, just with the sound of their magical voices. Probably the most peaceful time to listen to them is at dawn or dusk, when they sing more often. How heavenly it is to be in the forest with the sun just beginning to rise while hearing a few hermit thrushes singing. The effect they can have on our human mind is an indescribable experience. It is as if the paradisiacal voice of the hermit thrush every spring is a kind of bridge, helping to connect us to the spiritual dimension if we listen very deeply. Ralph Hoffman, a naturalist and ornithologist from the early 20th century, said it very well when he once wrote of the hermit thrush's song, and I quote, It is the opening note that gives the performance the effect of a chant of sacred music. None of the other fine performers among the mountain birds has the same spiritual quality of tone or gives the effect of religious ecstasy. End quote. I'd like to end off with a charming little story from the Mohawk tradition that gives the legendary origins of the heavenly song of the hermit thrush. It is one that is meant to teach children the value of honesty. Long ago, when the birds had no songs, only man could sing. When the good spirit walked the earth, he noticed a great silence. He devised a great game and told the birds that whichever one could fly the highest would receive a very beautiful song. But not all the birds were honest. In his desire to win the game, the small hermit thrush jumped on the back of the great eagle. 
the eagle flew higher than any of the birds. But when he came back to land, the good spirit said the hermit thrush had gone the highest, since he was on the eagle's back. Hermit thrush was awarded a beautiful song, but in his shame of not being honest, he flew into the deep woods. To this day, you may hear the lovely song of the hermit thrush, but you may not ever see him. Such a cute little lesson and story to give the reason for why the bird behind the beautiful voice is rarely seen singing it. That's a little about the incredible singing ability of the hermit thrush. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I also hope that you get to hear their lovely songs. I'm curious to know what other people's experiences have been like when hearing this otherworldly bird song. Comment below and let others know. If you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy two recent ones I made. One is on the effect birdsong has on the mental health of humans, and the other is three ways birding can help you on a deeper level. Thank you for watching. Happy spring birding!